Hi everyone and a warm welcome to Fun of Flying. In this video we will be taking another look at the Touch Portal application and in particular I would like to show you one of my latest projects whereby I've created from scratch a full suite of custom buttons for the overhead panel in the cockpit of a X-Plane 11 Zeebo 737-800X which includes all of the programming logic required for the instruments and switches to work as they should. This is what the overhead panel in a Boeing 737-800 looks like in practice and as you can see there are a lot of uh, toggle switches, rotary switches, annunciator warning and caution lights as well as a number of digital and mechanical displays and gauges. The interesting thing here though is that every switch required to go through the main power up and engine start phases of this aircraft can all be found in this one overhead panel. The only slight exceptions to this are the two engine fuel idle and cutoff levers that are located in the centre console and to the rear of the throttle controls. But do not fear, as I have already allowed for this within the program logic of the overhead panel itself. From my personal experience though, whilst important to a pilot in the real world of course, it seems that many of these switches and instruments in this overhead panel are actually surplus to requirements for someone like me, a simple simmer in a simulator, just trying to fly from A to B in the virtual world without having to worry about killing anyone in the process. Consequently, taking into account the limited amount of space available for custom buttons on just one touch portal page, which was a deliberate choice on my part by the way, and taking into account also that the keyboard bindings available to me were not infinite in number, I felt that I could get away with concentrating on just those switches that in my opinion were absolutely necessary to powering up the aircraft and getting the engine started. So having thought about it for a while and after spending many many hours designing everything this is what I ended up with. My touch portal representation of the real or virtual 737-800 overhead panel. As it turned out though, not only did I have room for all of the switches necessary to get the aircraft up and running, but I also still had room for a few extras, albeit that many of them are completely non-functional and are only there for aesthetic reasons. It would have been nice of course to see some of these extras actually working, but with my knowledge of Touch Portal and X-Plane 11 as it stands today, I just haven't figured out how to do it, if it's possible at all that is. Okay, so let's get this bit over and done with and have a quick look at which parts of the overhead panel are not functional. Well, at the moment anyway. I, these items here highlighted in red. Admittedly, it looks quite a lot of items, but believe me when I say that none of these are actually crucial for a simple simmer in a simulator like me in terms of getting the Zeebo 737 off the ground. But what they do bring, in my very humble opinion, is a great sense of realism to the panel and I also think they look kind of cool. Anyway, leaving that aside for now, let's have a look at the items that actually do uh, provide some functionality in the cockpit and the ones that will enable the full power up and engine start sequences, i.e. the area shown here in green. Top left we have a very nice looking Boeing logo but which also serves as a custom button to navigate between this page and Touch Portal's main home page, uh, which you obviously need to use when you're running this application on your iPad. To the right of that is the Yaw Damper switch with its own uh, orange annunciator warning light, declaring when the switch is in the off position. After that are the three rotary switches to enable alignment of the inertial reference system, or IRS, and when you press the top one of these, the programming logic behind it sets the display selector switch to the heading stroke status position. By pressing the other custom buttons for the two IRS selector switches, it sets these to their respective nav positions. Moving to the right again, we have the four toggle switches for the window heat. Although I haven't done anything with the window overheat test switch, as personally I've never needed to use it. Each of the four window heat switches has a green annunciator light uh, indicating when they are actually switched on. Now to the centre of the panel, slightly to the left, we have the master battery switch plus its cover. 
and under that there is the main ground power toggle switch. Over to the right slightly of that we have the emergency light switch plus its cover and below that the fasten seat belt sign switch. Right again there are the four hydraulic pump switches with two uh, orange annunciator warning lights which state low pressure when the switches are in the off position. Lastly on the far right we have the left and right air conditioning pack switches, isolation valve switch, the APU bleed and two engine bleed switches. Down into the left are the four electrical bus transfer switches, one for each engine generator and two for the APU generator, plus three blue annunciator warning lights showing when power is available. Below that are six toggle switches for the fuel pumps and just above is the cross feed rotary switch. Here again there are a further six orange annunciator low pressure warning lights for each of the six fuel pumps. To the right are the wiper rotary switches which for now I've set up to work at one speed only that being low although personally I don't think I've ever used them at all in any X-plane flight so maybe I've just been lucky with the weather. On the far right hand position are the various light switches, uh, wing lights, wheel well lights, try saying that when you've had a couple of sherbets, anti-collision light, position light and the logo light. Left of that are the main engine selector switches, the programming logic for which provides for a fully automated engine start independently on both sides which also takes into account operation of the fuel idle and cutoff levers which are actually located in the centre console. Left of that again is the APU start toggle switch followed by switches for the taxi lights, runway turn off lights and main landing lights. Now clearly all of these rotary and toggle switches are programmed with logic to make them work in X-Plane but at the same time they are also animated well, as best as I can make them animated, that is, with my current knowledge of what Touch Portal can do. Okay, so here we are in the Zebo 737 cockpit so that we can see the programmed and animated custom buttons in Touch Portal actually operating their counterpart switches in X Plane 11. On top of the cockpit uh, video sequence, I've overlaid another video sequence from my iPad, i.e. the one with the Touch Portal application loaded on it. Every time I press one of the custom buttons on my iPad, you should see each button shake a little bit in order to give you a better visual reference as to which one I'm pressing. I will also try to point out the relevant switch in the cockpit with my mouse cursor but try to keep an eye on the iPad video sequence as best as possible so that you can see the custom button animation and where applicable the annunciator lights working in unison. Trying to splice two separate videos together is a bit tricky but with a little bit of careful editing I think I've managed to pull it off with uh, little or no synchronization issues to speak of. Anyway here we go let's see Touch Portal in action. Okay, so initially we need to power up the aircraft, so you press the ground power switch, there it goes, and the logic behind that switch actually does a number of things. It uh, makes the external GPU available to the aircraft and actually switches the power on inside the aircraft. It also does a little tidy up routine to switch off a number of switches that were on at the start. Then we switch the battery on and you'll note the cover goes down as well. And following that will be the emergency light switch. And you'll note that the orange annunciator light goes out as well on the iPad and in the aircraft. Then we do uh, put the fasten seatbelt sign on. There it goes. <coughs> and we want the anti collision light on. There we are. And you can see the switch on the iPad just jiggling about a bit, which hopefully you can see anyway. So now we're going to align the IRS, the Inertial Reference System. And we've set the uh, display selector switch to heading stroke status. And now we're going to put the IRS align select but, uh, dials to nav. 
and then you get about a nine minute countdown until the IRS is properly aligned ready for programming your flight management computer then we're going to put the window heat on and you'll notice on the iPad and in the aircraft you get four green annunciator lights and we're going to put some fuel pumps on now in preparation for starting up the APU I'm sorry if there are long long uh, delays between these things but I'm just trying to slow it down a bit for you so you can see it so there goes the APU and you'll see the switch on the iPad mimics the one in the aircraft so it goes down two places to start and then back up to just the on position and then eventually we have to um, wait for the APU to fire up and bring power available to the aircraft you see the exhaust, uh, uh, exhaust, sorry, exhaust gas temperature gauge rising I think it goes up to about 800 degrees Celsius initially and then comes back again and settles <coughs> excuse me around 450 degrees there it goes and then power will be available to the aircraft when that little blue light comes on there we are and you now press the APU transfer or bus transfer which is to get power from the APU and then we can uh, dismiss the external ground power unit and switch that side of things off now we're going to put the APU bleed on there it goes and then if I remember we are going to switch on the yaw damper now which is top left there it is so watch the iPad as well there it goes and then we're going to do pitot heat so both switches are operated by one press of a button on your touch portal uh, in your on your iPad and we're going to put all the hydraulic pumps on there we go and uh, all of the orange annunciator lights in the or on the iPad also extinguish when they are, when those switches are on and we put the remaining fuel pumps on personally I never use the center pumps or the cross feed when I'm flying the Zebo in X-Plane but I've animated them and programmed them in any event so they're going to put some lights oh no sorry we're going to uh, start the starboard number two engine so one press of the custom button in, on the iPad causes the um, ignition starter switch to go to the ground position and I've programmed it to wait 27 seconds to wait for uh, the engine N2 to get to about 24 percent and uh, also the program takes care of the fuel uh, idle selector there went up on its own I didn't do anything else other than program that to to happen now there's a bit of a wait here because you've got to wait for the engine to spool up and uh, settle down a bit and what will happen eventually I think it's after 60 seconds from the moment I press this um, engine start um, rotary switch it goes back to off in the aircraft but we need it to be on constant ready for flight so I've programmed that to happen and there it goes and it's done the same on the iPad now we're going to start number one engine on the port side another 27 seconds waiting for the engine to spool up to 24% N2 and then the fuel selector will go from cut off to idle nearly there there it goes so back to the overhead panel 
and we wait for the engine to settle down the port side engine um, starter rotary switch will go back to the off position in the aircraft after about 60 seconds sorry about the delays there it goes and uh, on the iPad it will shortly go from the ground position to the constant position which it's done in the aircraft as well and now we're ready for flight and now we can um, uh, engage the uh, electro electrical bus for the engines and dismiss the APU there it is so the, the aircraft is now being powered solely um, by the engines themselves and now we're going to put the air conditioning packs on so we get a bit of cold cooler air in the aircraft left right you can hear that those fans running now now we're going to put some lights on this time see the switches on the iPad and every time they move the corresponding one in the aircraft moves as well ladies and gentlemen we'll be taking off in just a few minutes flight attendants please prepare the cabin for departure then we're going to put the taxi lights on and the runway turn off lights have a good flight followed by the runway lights, the, the uh, landing lights, sorry. Oh, I pressed that one twice, that's it. Now for demonstration purposes I'm going to just put the wipers, uh, turn the wiper switches to uh, slow speed, you can see them working now, and then I'm going to turn them off again, that's just for demonstration purposes, it's not actually raining. I want to burn the motors out. And we're now going to um, dismiss the APU bleed and uh, we're now running on engine bleeds only and I'm going to turn off the isolation valve. Although I did notice in my on my iPad the program not quite right because the animation doesn't uh, doesn't seem to have worked quite as well but I can fix that quite easily. And there we are all up and running okay so hopefully you saw reasonably clearly what was happening when I pressed each custom button on my iPad and also what happened in the aircraft with the corresponding switches and I absolutely promise you that at no time did I use my physical keyboard or mouse to operate any of the cockpit controls during the power up and engine start sequences that I've just shown you it was genuinely all done with touch portal and my iPad now, it may not come as any surprise to you that it has literally taken me hours of work to get to this stage, although I still feel that I could improve things slightly by getting some of the other currently non-functioning switches actually working. All I need to do is to find the relevant data refs in X-Plane 11 for the switches concerned, and I should be good to go. Now I'm sure some of you will be wondering how all of this works so I'll try to explain the key bindings that I've used and also some of the programming logic between, uh, behind sorry, the custom buttons in Touch Portal. As far as the uh, keyboard bindings are concerned I've programmed around 80 of them in total and all under one new and unique keyboard profile in X-Plane 11 which is being used solely for this touch portal Zebo 737 project. I won't go through every detail now as the next three and a half slides of this presentation are dedicated to them. But suffice to say that you can always refer back to this if you're interested in undertaking a similar project yourselves. With regard to the programming logic behind each custom button, we sadly don't have time to look at this in detail as it would take far too long but I can at least give you an indicator of the main logic sequence that I've used which applies to almost all of the custom buttons on this touch portal page. The logic 
uh, normally always starts with an overriding if then else statement and is placed under the on pressed tab on the actions page of each custom button as required. By the way if you're not sure about any of this then please by all means refer back to my previous videos that cover the custom button creation side of things in more detail. Whenever you do create a new custom button in Touch Portal it is generally always set to the off state automatically. So always assume that you are starting your logic from a switch being in the off position. So what this is saying is basically this. When you press the custom button on your iPad, the logic takes over and says if this switch is in an off state, which it will be unless you changed it during the button creation stage, then change the state of the custom button to on. Once this has been done, the logic asks for a keyboard command of Alt plus S in this case to be sent to your PC and Xplain 11, which is the taxi light switch toggle command. Next comes a change in how the custom button visuals or graphics are shown in Touch Portal and on your iPad, as I always try to mimic what actually happens in the aircraft itself. So when I created this particular button, I initially designed a graphic for it showing the taxi light switch in the off position and then designed a second graphic showing the switch in the on position. So what the logic is doing here is changing the visual appearance of the custom button when you press it so that the switch graphic shows a switch going from the off position to the on position. So in essence, that is uh, the first part of the logic sequence complete. We've pressed the custom button on the iPad. The state of that button went from off to on. It sent an Alt plus S keyboard command to explain to move the switch in the aircraft. And it also changed the visual appearance of the custom button on the iPad itself. Now when the custom button is pressed again on the iPad, the second part of the logic is programmed to set the state of the button to off. Issue another Alt plus S keyboard command to toggle the taxi lights off again in the aircraft and then lastly change the custom button visuals on the iPad so the switch there is also in the off position. In this uh, wiper switch example the logic is very similar to what I've just shown you although I've used different graphics to mimic the wiper switch in the aircraft I've obviously had to use different keyboard commands and I've also put in a couple of timer delays as well. So here then we initially start with the wiper switch showing in the off position and when the custom button for this switch is pressed on the iPad the programming logic changes the state of the button from off to on and it issues a keyboard command of Alt plus End to move the switch. It wakes 500 milliseconds or half a second and then issues the same keyboard command again as the switch in this case is required to move two positions clockwise to get from the park position to the low speed position. Basically I've put the short delay in uh, just to give the switch movement itself some sort of realism. When the custom button is pressed again on the iPad then all of the initial logic is simply reversed to switch the wipers off. And finally in this last example we have the number two starboard engine starter switch which as you can see is graphically in the off position as it would be in the aircraft. When this custom button is pressed on the iPad programming logic says if this switch is in the off position which it is then change the button state to on. And following that, a keyboard command of Alt plus square bracket is sent to the PC and Xplane 11 instructing the rotary switch in the aircraft to turn anti-clockwise one place to the ground position. The graphical image on the switch does the same thing on the iPad. The programming logic then asks for a 27 second delay which is sufficient time for the engine to spool up to 24% N2 and then it sends an Alt plus number pad plus keyboard command to the PC and Xplane 11 instructing the fuel select lever for number two engine to move from the cutoff position to the idle position. 
Then there is a further 33 second delay waiting for the engine to fire up properly and settle before an alt plus forward slash keyboard command is sent to the PC and X-Plane 11 instructing the engine starter switch to turn clockwise to the constant position ready for takeoff. The switch graphics on the iPad are also changed to mimic what's happening in the aircraft. When this custom button is pressed again then the button state is set to off and a keyboard command of alt plus insert is sent to the PC and X-Plane 11 instructing the switch to move anti-clockwise to the off position which once again is mimicked on the iPad. Apologies but in the snapshot I use for this video the lower part of this logic sequence is just slightly out of view. Anyway, hopefully from the three programming logic examples I've just shown you you'll get an idea of how each works and all you need to do now is use these examples as a base to make your own custom buttons if this is what you're setting out to do. Lastly I just wanted to cover the design and implementation of the custom button graphics. Basically this involved a painstaking recreation of all of the switches and instruments in the real aircraft and all of this was done by hand and from scratch in the Microsoft PowerPoint application just one switch at a time. Again it took hours and hours of work to recreate all of these switches of which there were over 130 so that they were as faithful to the real thing as I could possibly make them. Trying to explain therefore how I created each one of these custom buttons would be an almost impossible task in a standard YouTube video but if anyone needs any help designing their own buttons in future then please by all means let me know. So that then really brings us to the end of this video and I hope having watched it that you found it of some interest to you and I know the Zeebo 737-800X aircraft being free is a very popular one with simmers in X-Plane so I'm hoping that uh, there is quite a big audience for this particular video. Anyway as I said before if you have any questions please let me know and uh, please smash the like button if you think it was worth it and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you don't miss anything going forward. Ta-ta for now.